tinfoil hat. Oh, what the fuck are you guys even talking about? Global controls will have to be imposed, and a world governing body will be created to enforce them. Welcome to tinfoil hat. We, we, we go deep, homeboy. Eric, open your mind. Drink from the fountain of knowledge. There's lizard people everywhere. That's some interdimensional shit. Wake up, Aaron. This is only the beginning. Dude, you just blew my mind. Are you ready to get your mind blown? Go! Morning Swarm, man. Welcome to Tim Fall Hat. You know who I am. You know what I'm here to do. I'm here to rock. Thank you guys so much. Um, we had a great episode today. We had Isaac Wysip come into town to do the show, which was an honor to have him on. Him and his lovely wife, uh, Josie, came on the show. And unfortunately, I had to jam really early, so I couldn't do the the uh, normal intro. So here we go. A big week of live shows are starting to kick off. Okay. Uh, from here on, I'm out of town almost every weekend. So please, if you're in any of the areas, come see me. I will be in Alaska this weekend, Friday and Saturday night. I'm in Anchorage, two shows Friday, two shows Saturday. One is at Kill Coots Charlie's, and the other one is listed on at samtriplee.com. One is Friday, one is Saturday, okay? Then the following Saturday, which is July 24th, we are at the American Comedy Club in San Diego. That's a 420 show, and that is almost sold out. So grab your tickets now. And then finally, then the week on a super, the end, excuse me, the end of month on a super high note, we will be in Dallas, two shows. We're at Hyenas in Dallas, moved to the big club, two shows. First show is Tim Full Hat Comedy. And then the second show is Swarm Tank. It's Eddie. Bravo, Sam Tripoli, myself, that's me, uh, X, Xavier Guerrero, and Reed Becker will be there, so go check that out, and then the next day, which is July 31st, we will be in OKC, that's right, Oklahoma City, we'll be at the Brick House Comedy Club, and we will be doing um, another Tim Pole Hat Comedy, so come check us out, tickets are moving quickly, a lot of dates coming up. I'm super excited. Again, as of right now, the big 500 episode is going to happen in Las Vegas on October 16th. I'm getting the final details of everything, and we are moving forward. If you want to support the show, there's a lot of things you can do. One of them is go to Rockfin, that's R-O-K-F-I-N.com, and get all the premium content you could want. I have five or six shows on there. Sign up for any of them. Subscribe to any of them. It will be a great way to support the show, whether it's Zero, Tim Full Hat Premium, Broken Sim First Look, Conspiracy Social Club, The Greatest of All Time Sports Talk. It, the list goes on and on. It's a wonderful way to support everybody on the show. And then we now also have some wonderful new shirts on TimFullHatTShirts.com. We have uh, Shape Shifting Jesus. We have the baseball Tim Fall Hat shirt. And now should be loaded up by the time this comes out. Conspiracy Smoke Show t-shirts are all available again at tinfoilhattshirts.com. And finally, if you want to see any of my free shows, any of my free content, whether it's Tim Fall Hat, Cash Daddies, um, what else do we got? Oh, Punch Drunk, Union of the Unwanted. All those shows, my uh, opiate for the of the asses, all of it is available at samtriply.com. Samtriply.com. Go there, get all my stuff, my dates, everything's there. And they also, each show has its own 24 hour live radio station. Now, we I'm also proud to announce that Discord has new two of our shows, our Discords on the show. Uh, there's now a new Discord on there. I'm not sure that, what the handle is, but I will find that for you. But if you go to chat.samtriply.com, you can now enter what I call Smack. It's my own quote, quote, Discord. It is available now on samtriply.com. Go check it out and group meet a vibe with the Swarm Tribe. Okay. 
I love you all very much. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed the show, and I hope to see you in Alaska this weekend. Enjoy Isaac Weiss. Okay, so here we go. Very excited to have this guest in studio. We're starting to do more studio shows, so all the best are showing up. Hell, hell, the gang's all here. He's got uh, his second book out about aliens, uh, number two of eight book he, he's uh, authored. Uh, it's called Aliens, UFOs, the call Use Your Illusion to. Please welcome Isaac Weissip. And his lovely wife, Josie. How are you guys? Hey. Good, good, good. Thanks for having us here. Uh, very. It's my pleasure to be on the 16th greatest conspiracy podcast. Um, what number? You were pretty high up, I <laughs> yeah. remember that. What were you? Yeah, you were, you, you guys, were like three, I think. Yeah, you guys were talking about it on the one episode about being so low on that. I said, what the hell are they talking about? And I Googled it. I said, get the hell out of here. How'd my show beat your show? What was your, what were you? I like don't even two know. Or so, it was way up there. Yeah, it was like yeah. two or three I, or something. Hey, dude. That's cool. I don't agree with those for for the record. I have no problem with being ranked lower than you. Brother. No, your you show is superior show. to mine by many lengths. It's not good, better. It's just well. Yeah, you were number together. three. Was it number yeah. three? Yeah. yeah. Stuff they stuff they don't want you to know was number one. Those Which conspiracy guys, it's number four. Yeah, you. That will make sense. Oh, I beat Gordo too, huh? You beat Gordo too. Uh, You're up I there. I don't know who came yeah. up with that, but thank you. <laughs> I would out, love to know. Johnny, you thought, did we move up? Yeah, what we did that? move up. Holy oh. crap, we moved up. Where are you guys at now? Eight. We're eight. eight. Okay. Damn, nice. dude, I'll take top ten. I don't even care. Yeah. Eight is the number of money as well. Uh, if you want to see that list, where is it? Uh, Player.fm. Oh, snaps. Well, congratulations on the number Thanks. two ranking. I think Appreciate number it. two number three. <laughs> uh, so... I'm super excited you came out to LA. You wanted to come visit the studio and hang out with us and tell everybody about your new book. How's LA been treating you? I love it, man. I, I'm actually a big fan of LA. I know a lot of people, uh, you know, it's not everyone's favorite city, but I, I like it a lot. I think the city is great. The people drive everybody nuts. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, I concur with that. The, the city's got a lot of culture and the weather is phenomenal. Right now, the rest of the country is getting touched by weather, yeah. molested. By humanity. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that is what it is. Molesting you. Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're from Utah, so it's like, you know, 100 degrees every day, drought, dry as hell. Come out here, it's like 72. I was like, what What's is happening? What's the humidity like? It's just dry as hell. It's like none in do, Utah. You do know? you think this weather talk's going to help our rankings? <laughs> oh, <laughs> they're number one now. <laughs> so you came out now. Is it your birthday? No, man, I, I wanted to come hang out with you guys. I love this. You know, this I don't is know my, why I thought you were celebrating something. This is my uh, ninth appearance on Tinfoil Hat, and I've never been in the studio, so really? I said, let's do it. I think that might be the record. Outside of Eddie Bravo, I think you might be number two. I yeah, I had a hard time else. leaving it myself. I, I looked at it. It was, it was Nipsey Hussle, uh, Skinwalker Ranch, Isaac Cappy, Pop Divas, Swapcast, Free Britney Swapcast, Black Panther, They Live. Then uh, when I plugged the last Alien book, for Project Bluebeam, and then technically it's my tense because I was on Daily Dose. We talked about Kobe Bryant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're so, yeah. a regular. Yeah, so I thought, well, shoot, I've never been out here. No, Let's do it. you should come in all the time. I love people in studio. It's a lot more fun. Yeah. I mean, the the sky, you know, the Zoom has been great. It allows us to get a, a, a more wide range group of people on the show. But it's always fun when people are are in studio. We mostly have flat earth in studio conversations. <laughs> yeah. So it's good to talk about aliens. Especially during the pandemic because they were the only ones who weren't afraid to come in. <laughs> uh, so, man, we're living in interesting times right now, huh? I yeah. mean, like, I couldn't think of a better subject to talk about but than aliens, UFOs, and the occult. And so much of what is going on in this world is occult stuff. Yeah, this and this is... You know, if, if the audience only gets one thing out of this whole show, the idea I want to plant is, and, and this, you know, I'm a pretty skeptical conspiracy guy. I, I don't buy into every conspiracy. I think you're a little more center than me, for sure. Yeah. And, and, but one thing I know for sure is that with the alien disclosure um, process that's happening now, it is going to fuel a, that they're trying to create a new, uh, spirituality, a new religion. We're watching the, wi we're witnessing the birth of a new religion. And this is bringing all that is a cult, which of course is Latin for hidden. All that is hidden will come to the light. And, and this as, as, in, as weird as it may seem, it ties into all of the beliefs of the occult, this old spirituality. They're, they're basically making ancient aliens become real. 
uh, before our eyes. It's, it's happening. I know it, it sounds crazy right now, but like, give it five years, and uh, we're gonna be there where we're, you know, feeding b- babies to these alien gods. So you think <laughs> it's in that amount of time, that small of a time period, that that we're gonna get to where we're worshiping these aliens? Worshiping the aliens, I'd say maybe that's more like ten. And I mean, this is just my guesstimate. Yeah, what yeah, the hell yeah. Do I know. Mm-hmm. Uh, but five years from now, for sure, it's gonna be aliens exist and we all know it and of course and and we're already we're already there we're like there was a, a poll the other day it was like 65 percent of americans are like yeah i believe in aliens and, and and look i'm not i don't know what to believe about the aliens either like i know there's something going on i'm more of like uh the interdimensional camp than interplanetary yeah um, i mean that's totally what i believe in yeah man. and because when you go when, when you look at everything that's going on, in particular in the mainstream media, and you at, you look at through the prism of how does this help them get more money and more power, but mostly more power? Yes. Like, how does this help them get more power? Yes. Because we're printing money at this point. It's not even real. It's all just this is inflation that's coming because they're printing so much money right now. So... It's not about money, even though they're using it to buy up. I mean, it is insane what they're doing right now. In, in, just in broad daylight, like just straight up robbing. Like, and everyone's like, dude, Brittany, we got to free her. We do have to free Brittany, though. We do have to Come free on. Brittany. I get it. I get it. But if we had, if they said right now, free Brittany or get rid of the Federal Reserve, I mean, it's a real question, right? Right, right, right. Right? I mean, it's like, it's like, what should we focus on right now? Um, so uh, it's just unbelievable. Well, well and, and this fits into the Great Reset, right? Like, what you were talking about, um, uh, you know, the Federal Reserve and currency and all that. Like, that's that's simultaneously happening where everyone's questioning the nature of reality. Everyone's which is questioning the dollar, right? The, the U.S. dollar is a fiat currency. It's like we all agree on the social construct that it's worth this much. But there's a new a new kid in town with, like, cryptocurrencies. And it's like, even though, like, old people may not get it and be like, well, that's stupid. I'm not investing my money in that. Young people are. And it's a matter of time before this cryptocurrency is the new reality. Like, it, it's all about manifesting new realities, which, again, I tie into the occult and I tie into the aliens. And... um I got a quote here from Jacques Vallée, who uh, Jacques Vallée, he's like one of these dudes that's been around forever talking about UFOs, researching UFOs, right? In, uh, In the book, The Invisible College, he says, we're not dealing with people from outer space, but rather a control system being used to create greater impact with society and drive many to become fascinated with space travel, paranormal and new frontiers in consciousness. And that's what it's all about. It's about this new consciousness which like it, it bleeds into elements of fringy science with like quantum physics and all of these ideas of like woo woo law of attraction stuff and ultimately the occult, which again, like I'm not here to say it's right, wrong, works, doesn't work. Like I'm just saying like I'm observing this and like that's the pieces I think you see that fit you see it this. happening in real time. Yeah. As you as you talk about, you can see it happen in real time, which is a great example of this is a Asian hate, right? We watched that PSYOP happen in real time. We saw the initial, you know, explosion in the news, followed by all the opportunists that step forward, followed by people who are not experiencing it, talking about stopping it all the time, right? And it's like, that's kind of what happens. It, it, you know, it manifests itself, the system of um, uh, spreading the 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 psyop goes in the full motion and then the opportunity to step forward to put a face on it and then this groundswell of people who aren't really experiencing it at all g- g- being offended on other people's behalf and then right? how much easier when you think the president's are racist and you kept saying china china well, like, that made it so much easier to just make it here push it listen isaac was way ahead of that with you know being in the truth community and just calling out, I believe you co- were calling out Trump for a bunch of like, just kind of being part of the whole system. I could be wrong on that, but I felt like you were definitely one of the people early on that was like, Q is full of shit and yeah. I'm not really buying into it. And for that, you were you were right. I, I have my own opinions that I've stated several times on the show is about what you can actually do and what you can't actually do with the system. And 
one of it is pull out all your energy and i feel like that's kind of what they they've done but you know in terms of what it represented you know i mean the hope it was wrong but for me and i said this very early like it was very much about you know kind of telling you what the elites were doing and then at the end not giving you any satisfaction of anybody paying for it. So, again, if you kind of look through these things through the prism of how do I get more power, that kind of fits into it, right? Yeah. But you were definitely in head of that, and you were, you know, which is a very brave thing to do because everybody in that time was very much, you know, Trump's going to save us and all that stuff, yeah. and to go out and say that stuff is, uh, very, you know, it's like Jeanine Garofalo was like that with the left when she was calling out how bullshit all these war wars were and she paid a very hard price for it she got excommunicated from hollywood for a very long time so it's not easy to do that so you're definitely in head of that and i i think all this stuff plays into you know making you feel powerless and so much about space we had a guy on recently that starts his own religion about space yeah. and i'm like it's all theoretical, right? I mean, like, maybe all religion is theoretical in a weird way. Like, you believe these stories from the past. You know, you brought up law of attraction and stuff like that. I practice that, but I could also be 100% into that. It's some new age woo-woo, you know? But I don't know, it makes me feel better. But, you know, it's just like everything, you know, he's just started this... This whole religion, right? Astronism, yeah. Astronism based on that when he was 15 years old, he looked at the stars, and now he's written books on it and stuff like that. And I'm like, but you've experienced none of this in any weird way. The thing about law of attraction is I sometimes feel that like when you put out like positive energy, things just start appearing. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong, and yeah. I could be on the wrong side of that as well. Well, I bet you can think about a really non magical way that that could work though right if you're thinking positively and looking for opportunities you're going to see them yeah if you're in that negative mindset you're just not going to see the opportunities as they appear and you're going to think oh that wouldn't work for me you, like how I, many times you there's no magic in that at all if you so when you love is just always negative and you just see that their life just keeps getting smaller and darker smaller. yeah that's it man right so that's kind of what I what I do. But, you know, when it comes to this alien and space stuff, it's like, how many of us are ever going to go to space? This stupid billionaire thing with these guys <laughs> racing to go to... I mean, could you trust any of these guys? Like, they're all Jeffrey Epstein's friends. Like, how do we accept anybody? Like, someone brought this up the other day. My uh, Missy, her, her name is. She's, she started a podcast, but she's talking about... Dude, the guy who just went to space is Jeffrey Epstein's friend, and he has a company called Virgin. Hmm. Right? I mean, that's the reaction. <laughs> we should all have to that. <laughs> Yuck. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Well, that and that's what's funny is when we when we get into because I think the alien disclosure is part of creating a new global religion of a fusion of spirituality with science and the technocracy. Right? We talk about the technocrats taking over, and you look at simultaneously the Great Reset happening, and you've got this, you know, Klaus Schwab, I call him Santa Klaus. Yeah. Uh, he, he's, he's, he's saying, oh, you know, the World Economic Forum, we're here to read basically the redistribution of wealth. And it's like, no, dickhead, like you guys are the, it's the richest thousand corporations in the world. Like, yeah, but they're, they're not telling you it. which way the wealth is going. Yeah, exactly. Like, they, how do we trust those be, people? Yeah, it's all good. It's, it's redistribution, but it's the opposite way of what Absolutely. you're hoping for. Absolutely. And, and nobody and, can see this. I, I like. How can you not see this? Well, and and I get it from the perspective of like a bleeding heart liberal because I'm. You know, you've talked in the past. Like you're like you made mentions of like more like the '90s liberal versus the today's liberal, and I'm more of like a '90s liberal where it's like, you know, I I want people to be taken care of. I want a, a country where you know there's not people shitting in my front yard. Huh. You know what I mean? And 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 there's a place for government sometimes. Um, but then. You see some of the things happening, and and it drives you towards this, you know, anarcho libertarian point of view, which I get too. Yeah, I mean, it, it's hard to know where the right answer. All is. systems eventually fail. Yeah, because greed yeah. steps in, and and that's what the Great Reset. I, what I was gonna say is, I think the Great Reset. It's it's wrapped in like noble ideas where it's like. Look, uh, there's only so many resources for everyone, which I don't know if that's true or not. I mean, how do I trust these guys? I don't. 
Uh, but they but they wrap it in, in noble ideas of like we're gonna make sure like there's enough you know water for everyone enough electricity for everyone and by doing by doing this we're gonna tell you how much you're allowed to use and you know they make it sound like oh we're looking out for each other but like I think they're looking out for themselves and uh, you know I'm, again it comes down to control it's like you have Bill Gates going I'm taking shit like literal human shit <laughs> and making drinking water out of it. And you're like, well, how about we don't do that? We just take this ocean water that has a ton of salt water in it and we learn how to take the salt water and make drinking water and we don't have to take our poop and make it into drinking water. Right, right. Right, because if they really wanted to say, that's what they would be working on. But they're not working on that yeah. because that would actually help humanity. And we really got to get away from expecting billionaires to save us yeah. yeah absolutely yeah i'm with you a million percent on that i'm with you a million percent I like i don't like i don't know how you're a billionaire you don't do like cool shit like stop all hunger no like, i want to go i want to go to the moon like wouldn't you do like if you were a billionaire isn't that one of the things you like i think if I, you do that you get kicked out of the club i seriously talk about that all the time with isaac <laughs> oh <laughs> Hey, everybody, I want to tell you about our friends at Lucy Nicotine, okay? Lucy Nicotine is a company founded by Caltech scientists and former smokers looking for a better and cleaner nicotine alternative, okay? Finally, tobacco has an alternative that doesn't suck, all right? Research and developed for three years to be made for people, not patients. Lucy has created nicotine gum with four milligrams of nicotine and comes in these three flavors, wintergreen, cinnamon, and pomegranate. Holla at your boy, okay? Lucy has lozenges, okay, with four milligrams of nicotine that include the following flavors, cherry, ice, citrus, and mint. They went hard in the paint on that, okay? And it's convenient and discreet. Products can be enjoyed anywhere, on a flight, at work, at the gym, on the go. It doesn't matter, okay? So it's 2021. Get rid of your cigarettes, unplug your vape, throw out your dip, okay? And get some Lucy nicotine gum or lingerie, okay? This is the real deal. A subscription to Lucy comes directly to your door each month. It's so simple and you don't have to leave your house because Lucy has delivery down, okay? Lucy, Lucy, lozenges and gum, okay? Also have FSA and HSA eligible, so you'll be able to spend pre-tax dollars on them, okay? This is for the TFH swarm, okay? Go to lucy.co, C-O, okay? L-U-C-Y dot co and use the promo code Tin foil to get 20% off all products on your first order, including gum or lingerie. Okay, <laughs> this is Lucy.co. Use the promo code TINFOIL at checkout. Okay, I also have to give this disclaimer warning these products contain nicotine derived from tobacco. Nicotine is addictive chemical. Okay, Lucy.co and be sure to use the promo code TINFOIL. Yeah, we have our own podcast <laughs> called Breaking Social Norms. <laughs> right? Let's talk about that for a second. <laughs> We have the show, and she's the non-truther perspective, and I'm like more of the truther perspective. So it's like me, me. Uh, it's, it's like a it, this is like a amateur porn only fans for conspiracy people. It's me red pilling her every week. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you want to watch me red pill my wife? <laughs> but, but like because she doesn't know any of these ideas, so like, she doesn't heard, follow it. I don't follow it at all, and and that's what people get so like. Your husband does this, and I'm like, well, you know. If you want to get Sam to watch, you're going to have to get somebody else to red pill your wife. That's that's kind of his. He's in <laughs> while, while, while you watch, of course. I don't like, even know what that means, but I know what that means. Well, that was yeah. pretty rude. He's, he's watching in the corner and crying. Well, yeah. right. I mean, I did the show with Brian Callen, and I'm winning, like, slowly. Yeah, you're, 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 committed. you're taking you know? W's every Yeah, time. right. But, no, that's okay. Because but that's I, the pain of it. Like, I watch all of this stuff, and I, I see these billionaires and you see it in the news and it's like painful to sit there and watch them not do cool shit right yeah Yeah, not do cool shit (laughs) yeah exactly it's like you have this much fucking money and you can't take care of people like i i I don't know like and shoot yourself in a fucking space i don't get it theories on that i don't even know if they really have all the money that they're telling you about i part of me thinks it's giant theater like they're they're just actors playing a role and they've been put forward like we're finding out that Amazon has DARPA connections. We know Google has DARPA connections. We know Facebook has DARPA connections. These are all just fronts for intelligence services. And the, and this, in my humble opinion, not the U.S. government, 
But the international banking cabal, these very, very powerful groups of people, and even pe stuff like City of London, Washington, D.C., the Vatican, I think they're, they're fronts for even deeper shit. Yeah, That I'm goes with you on to that. Greenland, that goes to Antarctica, stuff that we don't even understand that's so much deeper than we even understand. The, 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 in, the, the intelligence com uh, organizations are akin to secret societies. They use the secret passwords. They have this sort of ethos of, you know, do whatever it takes to get the job done, up and to and including murder, um, you know, secret passwords, secret names, like, and, and secret agendas. And, like, to me, it seems like there's a lot of overlap there of, like, steering uh, the, the global consciousness, steering the social construct towards the will of who, right? That's the big question, who? The Illuminati? I don't know. But, like, it, 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 there's a lot of Nobody overlap. knows. Yeah. But there is something. You know, we had yeah. the last guest was on from uh, the World's Deadliest Podcast. They were talking about the bloodlines with vampires and, and lizard people. And, you know, like how it goes all the way to, you Ro know. Romania Val and shit. Yeah. Romania and Val the Impaler and... Uh, you know the the the, the dra clan of the dragon, I believe it's called, and yeah. like all that dark shit. And but who even knows that that's real? That's the whole thing, man. It's like, you know, I I I I think we can only take history from when the internet started. I know it sounds nuts, huh. but it's like that's when the rec the real record starts. I agree, and 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 to 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 add to that point, notice how they came out with this big anticipated uap disclosure report right in at the end of june and the report didn't give us any information it said and it, and it only went back to like 2003 or something like that right and it was like yo there was ufo sightings for like 100 years and you're telling me you only know about the last 20 years okay ironically right after 9 11 9 11 the same thing mass ritual on, on some levels they said oh 100%. everything changed they were pushing the same Great Reset talk. The, oh, new normal. Every the day, everything changed. This, the, the ritual started back then, nine eleven, and they're steering towards this. And, and you, you know, you listen to some of these people smarter than me talk about like the history of like you know these globalists and stuff. And like, it seems like you know your Aldous Huxleys and your H. G. Wells and all these people, they've been writing about this fantasy dystopia slash utopia. And like, it's hard to disagree that there's not. There's a plan in action here. And, like, that's the only thing I know about the alien agenda is, like, this is supporting something. And I strongly believe some kind of great reset, a global religion, uh, the Luciferian Antichrist could be it. I mean, it could be many things. But I know for sure it fits into all the fantasies of the occultists for hundreds of years of let's get rid of Christianity. Let's bring in Luciferianism and Gnosticism. You know, I completely agree with that. I think 9-11 was that they knew the age of Aquarius is coming and that's a great enlightenment. And we're seeing it happen in real time right now where people are waking up to. I, obviously, we're not going to get everybody. There are people who are straight up brainwashed oh, yeah. and they're ne we're never going to be wake them up. And if they do wake up, they're going to wake up on their own time. But they, according to stars, they knew so that this age is coming. They've shish kebobbed our timeline so much that nobody could really tell when it was going to start unless they really study, you know, astrology and astro theology, right? So, but I think they use 9 11 to usher in a dark entity of energy to battle this great awakening. And this is where we're at right now. This is exactly so. In Use Your Illusion 2, my second alien book, I bet. So, Use Your Illusion 1 was all about setting up the argument explaining why the occultists are into contacting aliens and alchemy and all these weird ideas the second book i basically go through several films like uh et flight of the navigator interstellar under the skin uh the john carpenter apocalypse trilogy all these movies right and i basically talk about the symbolism in the movie and how the, the messages you're seeing embedded in these movies i explain the theories in user illusion one and I said, okay, here's where you saw it. Boom, boom, boom. And one of the one of the recurring themes is alchemy. And alchemy is like this ancient art. 
uh, supposedly comes from the time of Zeptepi, this pre-Egyptian time when they were talking with the pagan gods and all this weird stuff. And, and this god Thoth or Hermes or whatever you want to call it told mankind, here's the secrets of alchemy. Here's how you can, you know, uh, you know, become immortal, whatever, superpowers. And the alchemical process, it, unnecess- it, 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 it includes the destruction uh, and rebirth. So basically, you have to destroy to recreate. And that's exactly what 9-11 was. And, and you saw it symbolically. The two towers became one, which is, again, like an alchemical idea of the twin pillars. Uh, when you look at the Kabbalistic tree of life, there's like the twin pillars. Then there's like the middle pillar of consciousness. And that, that's what we saw. And then, oh, by the way, the memorial has the black Saturnian cubes in the bottom. Unbelievable. I mean, it's wild. It blows my mind. Um, you, you got, I can't believe you guys got, uh, what was his name, S.K. Bain or whatever? Yeah. Because I was reading that book because I'm going to do a 9 show. You show. if you want him, yeah. dude. He, I mean, dude, he broke I thought down. he was like an enigma or something. I didn't know it was like a real dude out there. What about all the, all how almost all 9-11 is connected to Aleister Crowley. Yeah. I think Aleister Crowley is the anti-Jesus. This is, in my book, I talk about Jack Parsons, right? Like, and we, uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Jack Parsons. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Oh. So Jack Parsons is this occultist, do Crowley stuff, started basically NASA, the predecessor to NASA. He said that UFOs and flying saucers were the key to the new age of Crowleyanity, which is what we're experiencing right now. Crowley talked about bringing in the Aeon of Horus, and that's what we're in right now. And... Now, here comes the government with the world's largest disclosure movement. And it's like, dude, like, this has all been in the textbooks for 100 years now. Like, this is happening before it our own is eyes. It is crazy. It is dude. crazy. All of the, where was I? Oh, so I tried to bring this up on the last show. And I, I probably brought it up with the guys from um, The World's Dangerous. But it's like, how far is the sun from the uni- from uh, from uh, Earth? Ninety three miles. That is a theoma, uh, a thing. Yeah. Ninety three is the number. It's like right fucking there, dude. Yeah, yeah. It's um, it's the number of thelema, and it's also um tied into the gematria, like the twilight language of you know symbolically connecting. What is things. your thoughts on ger- gematria? Dem- <laughs> I don't know, man. Like, I, I don't have enough experience with with that in my life to be like, oh, yeah, it's definitely all, like, connected. But, like, I do believe in this sort of other dimension of things, um, you know, like, so so I, I don't I don't disagree with it. I, I don't – I haven't had experience enough to be like, oh, yeah, like, I believe if I, you know, put this number on my body or something weird, like, I, I don't have that sort of, uh, you know, experience with it to know for sure it works. It Credit is- to them, though. Because people that can just look at numbers and add shit up, even though sometimes I like, think it's a long crazy. shot. Yeah, you sh- yeah, you'd go crazy like that movie Twenty Seven. I yeah. think you go nuts. I think it's twenty three, right? Twenty three, yeah. You're Jim right. Carrey, yeah. yeah. I think you'll go nuts if everything's a number and you're yeah. just like coordinating. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, dude, I don't need to know all <laughs> this all the time. Yeah, dude. like there's those there's those certain conspiracy theorists that are really into it, and like you get them on the show, and like I've listened to their episodes. Like you know, you've had a few of them on, and it's like they just ramble on. And no, on they know and on. everything. They'll be like, and you know, he like, was born on so and so, and so and so, and you're just like, whoa, you should have gone, should have done, you should have gone to college. Yeah. Like you could have been like a mathematician instead. They yeah. just know everything. Yeah. But now with the internet, and it's just interesting because there are degrees, obviously, of conspiracy theorists, right? You know, and I, I mean, where I am today versus when I started this show, I, I'm much deeper into it. But I'm also out of it in a weird way in that I'm a conspiracy theorist, but I, I don't focus on on it in the terms of like losing my mind on it now i'm i'm into the spiritual realm right now which is like looking inside myself taking care of the things that matter to me which is i think is very important man i do believe that the internet has changed the game and allowed us to know uh, what they're up to but i feel like they this is gonna sound weird but i also think they've They've realized that, so now they're flooding it with all these crazy, um, so much information that you don't know what's coming or going. So that, to me, the key is always to just let it go. It's just like, stop. Like Again, we talked about the, the British monkey butt dildo guy reading to the children in England, and it's like my friend in the United States is losing his skull about it. He's going to hear this. I'm not losing my skull, but he was like, can you believe this? And I'm like... 
Um, yeah, man, but I, like, how's that gonna affect my life right now? Yeah, dude, I'm with you, uh, you know, 100. I'm with you on that because uh, if you don't watch it, you end up being black pilled, and then like everything's bad, and it's like, like I don't want to get there either. I, I, like that might be the truth. That might be the truth. I don't disagree with it. I just like. I don't want it to be the truth. So on some levels, I'd rather be ignorant and be like, dude, I'd rather white pill and just be like, but I think let's focus on how to make our lives better. Forever, though, dude. I yeah. think there's always been black pills that doom and gloom is coming, and it's never come. Hmm. Or it came and wiped us all out, so who gives a fuck? And then we started all over again, right? Yeah, yeah. Do yeah, it could be, I, man. I, I, when it, I, I feel like... Like, if you go back in time... Sorry to cut you off. I'll no, go ahead. Me, but if you go back in time, you can see the dire warnings of those who say impending doom is coming. Right. And then it, like... Yeah, that like, within certain countries, we're told this is crash and that is crash and this thing, this civilization's gone and that civilization's gone. But in reality, humanity just keeps marching forward. Yeah. So it's like, how much of that can you get worried now? I am telling everybody to buy generators right now. And you're buying one right now. I've been thinking about buying a <laughs> propane generator. <laughs> Legit, that is the Pro propane, huh? Becoming king of the hill, man. Just hang around. Why propane? Here. Is there a reason? Well, because now somebody told me that gas has a shelf life. It does. And propane goes yeah. on forever. Even, uh, like, what do you call it, non-ethanol gas or whatever? It'll evaporate eventually. I oh, think it'll be hard to get propane, though, in, in, after... A That's while. why you load up now. Okay. Like, I mean, do I think they're to gonna knock out the grid forever? Like, so, so, which is kind of like why we're getting. Why is the rest of the world constantly revolt, re revolting all the time? Constantly, because their margin for error is so thin. It's easy for them to go, okay, overthrow these guys. Just saying, here we have it good, right? And they don't want us to completely throw over the system because we're loaded to the teeth with guns, right? <laughs> right. And the, you got, got Joe Biden go, oh, man, what are you going to do? Take down the government, man? You're going to have to have a rocket launch. And you're like, well, you guys are crying about an old lady on January 6th. That lets me think that you guys are way more nervous than you fucking are letting us on. To, to. So I, I don't, because if they could just napalm all of us, they would do it by now. Yeah. In yeah, my that, humble opinion. Yeah, I'm with you on that. Well, I, I, well, look at Hong Kong and Cuba. Imagine if they had guns. Yeah, that wouldn't be going Imagine down. if they had guns right now. Uh, they'd have food. They'd have food. Uh, but they, since they don't have guns, well, they don't have none of that shit. don't allow any system that isn't pro-banker to happen. Like, you can say whatever you want about socialism. I always think it leads eventually to communism. But no socialist system has been allowed to flourish i mean europe i guess there's socialist countries there but they say they're capitalists but you know the international bankers come in and just won't allow it to go they put embargoes of course cuba's riding right now we're embargoing them like a motherfucker we're not even giving that system a chance to fucking flourish yeah well the, and there's a bit of like there's a bit of you know kind of like hollywood with the with the magic and the illusion sort of thing like that same thing happens on the level of like the mainstream media news. Like there's a lot of corporate and financial interest tied into like I mean, people know this listening, this isn't shocking, but like the idea that like they're 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 influencing reality and behaviors and all that stuff. Um I, I was just reading through uh Jacques Vallée's book, Messengers of Deception, which is all about the alien movement, right? And um, he talks about, he says, we already have human technologies that are both physical and psychic. And he, he's talking about influencing the consciousness of the observer, right? And he uses the television set as the example where he's saying, like, sure, you got this physical box, but it takes, um, like, the manifestation and the energy of the person watching it to turn it on. And it, you then give your power over to it, and it controls yes. your consciousness. And you and your and worse yet, your brain doesn't really know if this is real or fake. It just sees like murders and things happening, and and it, and it starts like this fear thing, and then and they know how they know this is like the tool of cultural change, and they show this stuff to you, knowing they're going to sell you something. And here we go back to the bankers. The bankers run all of it. Ca yeah. Capitalism, communism, you name it. Like I think they're behind all of it. So yeah. when I do a comedy club, the first person to complain is a white woman. We'll go up. <laughs> to the manager and complain that I'm saying mean fucking jokes, right? But this is the same demographic that basically carries murder entertainment. 
They are the fucking sole demographic that is carrying that genre of entertaining. Uh, and you know that based on all the commercials. <laughs> they're Tampax commercials. They're they're a million. They're geared towards mothers, moms. That's who watches it, right? Yeah. Why are they so obsessed with like true crime all the it's time? It's so crazy. It's but weird, the, the first huh? one to cry about feelings, and I'm like, <laughs> hey me. man, <laughs> I hate to tell you, the number one way of hurting people's feelings <laughs> is murdering them. <laughs> And it's this weird mental gymnastics that they do, but it's always how they're they're just programmed. What do you think that is? You think like that's like the cancel culture stuff and all that? You think that's like uh, this is what happens when when you got like Maslow's hierarchy of needs, like when it's filled too high, and now there's nothing to complain about really, and you're oh, like, 100%. let me find something. That so you have to. So like the Buddhists say that this this realm is suffering. You will suffer here. And some people have it so good they have to seek out suffering. Yeah, Immanuel Kant talked about that. This philosopher, I was, I was just reading about it because I was reading about um, you know the Enlightenment and and the the actual Illuminati and all that. And and he was saying something very similar. It's like you create your own heaven or hell. One hundred percent. It's like and people lock into that, huh? And they just want to complain about everything. You know, it's like it goes back to opportunists, dude. It's very easy to want to step into a character and play that role, even though your life really isn't that. Like Ice Cube. I always say Ice Cube is the Larry the Cable guy of, of gangster rap mm -hmm. because he wasn't that guy at all. He created a character and just stepped right into it and, and fulfilled the need of the intelligence communities to create crime rhymes to get people and you listen to old rappers they're like it went from everybody at the club hanging out having a good time occasional fist fights to everybody showing up with guns and it was nwa kicked that whole thing off mm. and then you have later on people like dmx realizing what they'd done trying to undo it but that that was all done on purpose man yeah. and it's a manipulation so going back to like the demographic, like it's all rich, it's all rich kids. Whether it's white, black, Asi Asians are just basically white people, and that's why they love this Asian hate thing, because they have the highest standard of living, and now they can act like they're oppressed. Oh my God, people are, even though none of them are getting punched in the face, and all that's by some a random black person, but they never want to address that because then you're really pushing back on culture. So it's just easy to complain about racism without actually calling out who's doing it to you because it's all slacker activism. And there's people you see on billboards around here talking about Asian hate that have been famous for decades. Huh. You're decades. Gonna get, you're going to get banned on something here soon like this. <laughs> well, we don't put it on uh, Instagram. I mean, we don't put it on YouTube, so who's going to ban us? I'm yeah, head of I'm... comedy develop. But the point is, it's rich kids... <laughs> I mean, when you literally, when you literally have yeah. Malcolm X and the Unabomber saying the exact same thing, which is rich white kids oh. are the most dangerous. Which rich white liberals are the most dangerous animal on the planet? That's right. I did. I do remember hearing that. So huh. I was. I put this tweet out and I, I took it down off of Instagram. But it's like when I was growing up, the rich white kids were like the Cobra Kai mean girls, right? <laughs> and they were fucking pieces of shit. But now they're also the social justice warrior Antifa scumbags. So it's it's like it's just on what part of the spectrum they fall on, yeah. but they're still the same people. Yeah, you know, we talked about that on we did you know our podcast we do on the side is like kind of fun and we talked about like our favorite eighties movies on the one episode, and that was like a recurring motif growing up in the eighties was like it felt a lot like it was sympathetic towards like Poor middle, people. lower yeah. class people and you know, you always like the, the bad guy was like the rich kid. You yeah. Know? And like, it's not. And so then that like, switched in the late 90s. Yeah. yeah not while it's been this psyop like, going on. Yeah. But now the rich white kid Paris is Hilton. trying to demonize the poor white kid. Well, no. And now the thing is to deny class altogether. Like LeBron mm -hmm. James has been famous since he's 14 years yeah, old. Yeah. I mean, 14 years old. He was on a national stage. He was living not with his mother because his mother was a drug addict, living with a, uh, his coach who was middle class. And then by the time he's a senior, he's driving a giant Hummer back when that meant something. Oh, wow. 
Right? I mean, so this kid's been, this kid, this grown ass man's been famous since he was 14 years old. But now he's trying to connect with poor kids in the, in the inner city by acting like, and he's completely botched everything because it's not real. It's a character he's playing. So it's you, like the you Chet didn't, Hanks. Yeah, you didn't see that. Right. Chet, 100%. He's trying to play a character. And now you have Vice and BuzzFeed. These rich kids trying to convince you poor kids are all the fucking problems. When their parents, it's like Portland, man. All those kids' parents work at Nike. They've caused all the chaos. They, they, they make money off of sweatshops. What are you talking about economic disparity? You know? Yeah, yeah. It's all a psyop because you don't really find out who people are. They play a character. I mean, you had that one guy, that, and I say it all the time, but you had that one guy that was, um, did I think it was called Private School Negro. And it's just like, you went to a private school and you're crying about racism when it's really classism. It's character. You step in, you play a character. I feel like there's a disservice for people that go to private school. I feel like public school, I, you know, we went to public schools growing up. Me and, too. And like, there's, a, there's a, a good service with that. Like, you, you're exposed to more sort of like, I don't know, demographics of life and stuff. I yeah. Don't know, I, it, whereas, like, you know, I have a, uh, I know people that went to private school and, like, I'm sure the result is better as far as the education goes, but life experience, I feel like, was better They're for awful. me. They're yeah. awful. Yeah. I mean, but right now, if you send your kids to private school, I think it's for a different reason. It's for what they're teaching them. Oh, well, you right. send your, like your now, kids to private now. school because public schools have been so shish kebab, but now, you know, people are pushing against critical race theory yeah. right you got Lo, 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 what's his name lorenzo Lo, not, gum what is his name i, I put it, uh, it on twitter what was the guy that the puerto rican that plays all those fucking characters and none of them are funny <laughs> i don't know who you're talking about. what's his name he's like the famous puerto rican actor lorenzo lamas not yeah. lamas no a soap opera star no go to sam triple e doc no not sam triple e uh, fat dragon productions anyways he he, you know he's ta he's like talking about how important a critical race theory is to this country. I'm like, you've been famous for decades in a country well, you're not complaining about. Well, I think I think this this fits into this sort of elitist attitude with the Great Reset and all this stuff. Keep going. Of of they feel on some levels they've been blessed by God, and they deserve the place that where they're at and they're now responsible and like they are further enlightened and more evolved than the, the common folk. And to them, the ends justify the means in, in participating in any of these psyops, any of these conditionings, uh, you know, whether it be aliens, occult ideas, they think they're responsible for ushering in this new age and, and moving mankind along this evolutionary timeline to what they deem to be the, the future and the greatest way of living. It is really weird. What's his name? Uh, John. Uh, John Leguizamo. Yeah, he's a, he's like a stand up dude. He's a he's first of all he's not funny. Okay, oh, okay. And, and, and I'll I'll fight him for charity. I ain't afraid. <laughs> and second of all, he's, uh, he's sitting here crying about critical race theory in a country where he's been a millionaire for decades, for decades. Yeah. Like you're crying about this. Tell me about why critical race theory is so important. Even though you've been making it as a theater touch butt actor for fucking decades. I'm going to have to separate the art from the artist here. He was he's a good actor. I like him. Okay. <laughs> Why'd you whisper that? Because I didn't want to get yelled at. Anyway, <laughs> my point is, and I'm just trying to think about, like, is it do they get a memo they should say something? Or is it just they see that this group of people that they want to align themselves with are saying certain things, so they say it as well. Like John Cusack, like railing against Julian Assange. It's like, what are you doing? Oh, no. Did he do that? Yeah, it's did he really? so nuts. Oh. It's so nuts. Uh, we, you can't have any. You can't have any heroes. I mean, Jesus. Right. <laughs> but this is this goes along the lines of the Great awa Awakening, not the Great Reset, but the Great Awakening. Like you start to see who is really what. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and and it's all about so like like you said with the internet, I feel like you're you're right. You know, this internet thing is like the genie's out of the bottle, and they're trying to like sort of shove it back in to, to get the control system back on the tracks. Because like I experienced this personally with Google. I've cried about this a million times. Sorry, my listeners, but my blog IlluminatiWatcher.com was like 
I was, I was, I was a blogger and a writer. I didn't mess with podcast really. And it was in like, and I, I started it, the podcast in 2014, but I didn't really care. It was like a casual side thing. And I was blogging and I would, I would make money off of Google AdSense, right? Cause I would get so much traffic to this website and I was like, Oh cool. I'm getting paid to write. I love this. And I was hitting 500,000 page views a month on fire every month. Boom, 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 higher, higher, higher. Then in like 2016, immediately boom. linear drive. Boom. They, they took me off the front page. I used to get, I was the first three hits of anything related to Illuminati. You, you type Taylor Swift, Illuminati, Katy Perry, Illuminati, anything. I'd be boom, right at the top. Boom, boom, boom. Cause I had articles. I wrote two, three articles a day and I was just killing it. And, and linear path. Now I'm getting maybe 20,000 page views a month. Yeah. Maybe? yeah. Not even. I, I mean, cause like- they, they, they censor out all the, all the stuff. And I'm not saying like, Oh, I'm the proprietor of truth. They should keep me at number one. But like, you type in Illuminati Katy Perry, you're getting some BuzzFeed nonsense throw you off the, the things. And I'm like, this is crazy. We're watching censorship. 1984. Right? Yeah, it's total 1984. Couldn't agree more. My YouTube channel, right? I was I'm I have a I'm at 130 subscribers for like two years now. And we used to get anywhere from 50, 70, 100,000 views on our videos. I mean, the one you did hit a hundred thousand, like bam, like fast dude uh, now we can't get over fifteen thousand. Yeah. we get more views on things we post to a channel that has a, a tenth of the, the, as many views wow. uh, fourteen thousand. Yeah. dude yeah. on instagram uh, it's unreal i've shown johnny our page that our our, our new page has twenty thousand new new followers there's people i've been telling them to come over here our old one had sixty thousand i'll post the exact same thing and the twenty thousand will get more than the sixty thousand, which yeah. just makes no fucking sense. It's yeah. so weird. How do man. we how do we wrest this power away from them? We got to find a way to well, to make our own institutions that play fair, you know, and and are even handed. What well, what can we do? I mean, is it just using Duck Duck Go? Is it well, start with that? Our, our we're doing what we do, which is putting our our, our content everywhere. It is the consumer. That well, I that's hear- who I'm asking on behalf of, though. What do you do? You got to go to these other platforms, right? I'm kind of teasing yeah, you Yeah, I mean, like, you people... Go to SamTriply.com. You yeah. got to go there. I mean, like, everything is there. The only thing that's not there is an audio RSS feed, which I sh- I could e- I-, I should tell them to put in. But you can get... There's, that, like, a 24-hour radio station of all my free content. You can listen to it there. But the point is, you have Rockfit, Odyssey, BitChute, Rumble. Those numbers should be huge. You should be there. Stop crying about like censorship. You're all crying about it. I get it. And then I'll get like someone go, where's Tim Why is it on YouTube? And then someone will be like, it's on 90 other po- other websites. Go there. Stop crying about it. And it's true. Stop crying. <laughs> I'm not asking you to get on Southwest or or Sparrow Airlines right. and fly somewhere to get my content. Just go to your address bar and put in another website. And you don't get ad reads on there. You go on YouTube and I swear they give you an ad read right when it starts. Then they give you one three minutes in. If you don't have that mouse, yeah. it's fucking annoying. Cause yeah. It's like over there and I gotta, I gotta get up again to yeah. press the skip button. And they be throwing like 20 minute ads now because you won't press it. So they, they're fucking assholes. So go to samtrippy.com, go somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah, and 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 look at what's ultimately happening here, because because I get your argument. I feel the same way. You YouTube banned me a while ago, and you say, well, it's just as simple as you know, go over here now. And the people who like you and listen to you, they'll be like, okay, cool, I'll go over there, and they do it. But like, you're not expanding the audience, and that's what they want. They don't. They're kind of they on want- some levels okay with you having samtriplee.com. They're like, okay, load your videos there. They're siloing us. Yeah. That's basically what you're they're saying. Like, they're good with like, you know, 5% of the population is into conspiracy. Whatever. Cool. The fringy Ill- minority. Go for Matt, it. Matt. You know we- who I think they did that to? Rogan. Let's give him a deal and let's get him off of YouTube because that's where the kids are. Yeah. Can't find... I, I don't... Sometimes I have to fucking go out of my way to go find... You, Rogan, because he's got Neil deGrasse House, and I got to see what bullshit he's got to say. But it's got going out of my way because I'm always on YouTube, and if it's not there, I feel like they gave him money and told him like, "Hey, the kids, he's influencing That's the kids." That's definitely possible. Yeah. yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, because I, I look at I look at because uh, I used to, you know, I don't I don't listen to every Joe Rogan episode, but like now I I find it just that extra step is yeah, kind of a hassle. And we, I'm like, we sound like our followers now. Oh, yeah. extra step! I got to go to samtriply.com. <laughs> I, I got Spotify on my phone, and right. I, I still am like, I don't know. I don't fuck with Spotify. You know, I wish it was on Apple. Like that's the thing I use. Yeah. But like they they make you take that extra step, knowing that like you're not going to expand or like you know reach those extra people that you know. It, it's like it, it's like uh, I always talk about Tupac and JFK, right? Like you can have a message. You can have an audience, 
You can't have both. You know what I mean? Like, I love that. But here's the thing, dude. I, I mean, Johnny, I could be wrong, but I, I mean, based on what I'm watching, is like you hear this the CEO of Google saying they're not meeting their views numbers. Their numbers are down. I'm convinced that's why they're running so many ads to make up for all the lost views that they lost from Alex Jones, Joe Rogan, all these other people. So maybe siloing it isn't optimal, but if you really want to learn what's going on, people will learn. And I'm sorry, dude, but TikTok is just creating an army of conspiracy theorists. I mean, the conspiracy <laughs> videos on TikTok are like something we've never seen before. Why aren't you there yet, Sam? Because I just, I, is listen, it the China someone thing? wants to take this stuff and put it on TikTok, go for it. You won't hear me complain. I'm over it, man. I'm over chasing this. Like when everyone's like, get on Clubhouse. Fuck you. Yeah. I'm well, not getting on Clubhouse. Here, Here's my stuff. You want to find it, you can get all my free stuff on samtriplee.com. I'm, I'm good, man. I don't want more work. I'm not interested in it, changing that. I'm more like, I'm going to leave this here, and you, if you find it, you find it. If you don't, you don't. And, the, you know, I know some people out here, yeah, I stopped listening for a while, now I'm back. I get it, man. It's like we're, we're almost at 500 episodes. That's a lot of episodes to hear somebody talk. And I hope someday you'll get bored and come back and listen again. I would appreciate that. But I'm just creating it, putting out, and if you find it, you find it. Well, the conspiracy around TikTok is like they'll make you go viral the first time. So you get addicted to go viral. So I they'll let, agree with yeah, that. they'll let little kids go viral. And once you go viral, it's addicted. And you're like, I gotta do it again. How do I do it again? And they'll let you go viral, they'll give you ten thousand followers. Cause it seems real easy to go on. Everyone tells me like, dude, just go on TikTok. I got like twenty thousand subscribers now. And I'm like, uh, you ain't no one. Why do you have them? Yeah, and, and what does that translate <laughs> yeah. to? Huh. What does it translate to? I don't know. Yeah, well, have I, you sold a shirt? Yeah. Have you sold a ticket to your show? Tell me the dollars. And I'm not shitting on it. I have friends of mine who've blown up on TikTok. I hope it, I, but where does it translate well, it's, to? It's funny. I started, I, I'm the same way. Like, I'm kind of burned out. Like, I don't want one more social media to, to deal with. But I started a TikTok because I thought, well, let me, all right, if this is the trend or things are going on, I want to set up shop so that I've got something going on. And I made, I don't know, maybe 15 to 20 videos where it's just me sort of giving a one minute short of an entire podcast episode. And I've, out of like 15, 20 videos, I, I average, I don't know, 100, 200 views. It's not a big deal, right? It's a small account. But I did one episode on the, on the Baphomet, you know, the goat with the titties. Mm -hmm. And that one blew up like 2,000, 3,000 views out of all those. Like, that's the only one. I'm like, what's going on here, man? Yeah. Like TikTok's like, they're, it's again like this occult thing. They're good with the occult, the, you know, the revelation of the method kind of stuff. On some levels. And I just wonder how many of those are real views. Yeah. Yeah, it's it, just absurd, right? Like, I only, I only have a, a few followers, relatively, just a couple. I mean, you should, like, I have a buddy of mine that says he, and I'm not saying, I, I, I love him and I support him. He says he has 330 million views on TikTok. You shouldn't be able to go anywhere. <laughs> right, Without yeah. getting mobbed everywhere. <laughs> huh. All the time. Yeah. If, the, if that, and I'm not, I, I'm happy he's doing well. I, I want it to all be real, but it's like, what's the translation of that? Where does it translate other than trying to get you on TikTok? Yeah. Yeah, well, there's comment. There's this, one of my homies was like, dude, this comic went up before me. He was supposed to sell tickets, but his followers are from TikTok. Those people aren't buying tickets. We all, we, because who are yeah, they? Who are they? Yeah. If they are, it might be. And if it is, it's like kids. Like it's just they just scroll through the pages oh. and like. Now I know a lot of guys who went from Vine to mm -hmm. YouTube, Vine to, you know, uh, podcast, and those numbers translated, so they're blowing up. Well, the, but, well, but, the kids today, they'd rather be um, like there's there's like certain studies they did back in like the 80s and 90s versus like in the last 10 years, and the kids like. The number of kids who'd rather be famous than rich, it like flip flop. You know, it used to be like only ten percent of the kids said they'd rather be famous than rich, and now it's like ninety percent. You know, that's all they care about. They don't care about money. They care about fame and going viral on social media and that kind of thing. Uh, which it's an ad addiction. Yeah, yeah. yeah and 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 it, and it fuels this transhuman thing, right? Like this idea of like living in this virtual matrix thing, and uh, it's like Avatar come to real life, and and you know, it's just a matter of time. We're we're gonna. This is coming down the pike real fast. Like that singularity Ray Kurzweil talks about. That's coming up in like 10 years. 20 I think years. they want to trap us in this realm. 
do you, and and I'm torn on that idea, right? Like, because you start getting you into, cannot agree with that. By the way, you, if you don't think that's real, no, I, totally I, fine I don't. I, I don't know where I stand on that because, like, I, I don't believe in flat Earth, but the simulation theory. Sometimes I think that could be true, but like then I look at simulation theory and I think, well, that's kind of a gnostic idea, and it's like saying, like, well, this world we're in is basically like a deception, and if that's the truth, then that means that God who created you is an evil bastard. And I'm like, I don't really want that to be the the truth, you know what I mean? Like, it doesn't make me feel good at night. But no, like, I get that. But on some That's levels, Bill Hicks's joke about dinosaurs. Oh yeah, what's that? That you yeah. know, that super Christians were like, they just put that there to, you know, to kind, fool you, yeah. yeah, to fool you. You're like, does anyone else like a little fu- perturbed by that? <laughs> that God's fucking with you? <laughs> yeah, you. I mean, I think the the same thing though. You could have a, a, a simulation where. The idea is to level you up, you know. I mean, that could be. I mean, I think that could be done by a benign creator, or at least a, or at worst, an indifferent creator. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like the like the Buddhist thing. There's, I mean, so much of how we see the world is through this very limited, yet powerful brain we have, right? Mm-hmm. With there's, you know, it's like when you think of like, are there entities that have always been around? You can't think of that because you're like, there had to be moment one right where that thing was created but what if that there is things out there that have always been around and our brain just can't think that far behind yeah and that's why i'm with the alien interdimensional idea like sometimes when you see like uh, dogs or little kids like they'll be like looking in the corner of a room like they're interacting with something and it's because their sense of reality and their filters hasn't like the social construct hasn't taken part yet and formed their limitations of like well, there's no such thing as a ghost, so it can't be there. Like, no, like these these these, these little kids or something, they see something. And I, I just have a hard time believing that this little sliver of visible light on the big electromagnetic scale is it. Like, it's just not. I just I don't totally believe it. I totally agree. Uh, which is what I think a lot of these occultists, when, to talk about aliens some more, it's like the occultists, they're aware of this sort of thin veil, right? And, like, that's all the stuff they, they study and practice is, like, this magic and this making contact and sort of piercing this little veil to get through to other entities. Uh, and, and it's no different than ghost hunters. And, and like, I believe all that. I believe like that's a real thing that happens and there's real entities in some other dimension. And uh, there's people that have been studying this craft, this art of making contact for hundreds of years. And I think the, the, the intelligence agencies going back to like the project Stargate with Hal put off and all these people, uh, Russell Targ, who by the way are, are tied into Tom DeLonge's To the Stars Academy. Like, like the, the, sim, the, the, the parallels are so bizarre to me that I'm like, how is not everybody talking about how, like, there's this weird occult quantum entanglement thing going on? And, like, to me, it's all the same thing. Uh, and, and, and I lay out a good argument for it in the books, but, like, the, the ultimate idea is, like, symbolism ties into this idea of, like, penetrating into the consciousness and, and, and it, it's able to facilitate a communication, right? And like that's that's why we see it in the films over and over, and that's why Project Stargate's people are out there talking about it right now. It's because they're, I think they're trying to brace humanity and mankind to understand these things because they know that the science is catching up, and with with things like 5G and the Internet of Things and, and processing speeds and the singularity and all this, this technology coming down, they're going to really perfect this craft, but now they got to like lay in the foundations for people to understand what's happening because you can't just hit them out of nowhere with like channeling this alien through. Uh, they got to sort of warm you up to it. That's why I think five to 10 years because NASA, when I wrote the dark path back in like 2016 or whatever it was, 17, we were, I was talking about aliens back then because the, the chief scientist at NASA back then said, we're going to prove there's aliens by the year 2025. How the hell does she know that, right? <laughs> how does she know that? She's close. Yeah, she's real close. She's real close. And, and and you see how it's unfolding with the disclosure movement. Like, they're slowly sprinkling it out. Like, oh, okay, yeah. Well, the military said it's real, so now it's real. Well, here's some videos. And, uh, you know, it's it's just funny to me because I'm like, dude, I, I, think this is, I think this is all just a setup for this big change in culture. And, and right or wrong, I don't know. Um, I just know, like, like, I always talk about Diana Pasolka's book, American Cosmic or cosmic American, she, she lays out, she's a professor of religious studies, right? And she hung out with this UFO secret society people who believe it. 
as she says it herself, she's like, all, that's all she studies. She teaches the foundations and, and creations of new religions. And she basically is like, you're witnessing the creation of a new religion, everybody. I don't know if you know this. And like, it blows my mind that like, not no, everyone's I, talking about this. I mean, dude, there's so much. There's so much into it. Like the influence of these elites on all these religions. I mean, we talk about it all the time. I mean, the royal family and their connections to Islam. The, you know, the, the elites, where did, where did the Talmud come from? And why is it so different than all the other books that, that, that the Jews have? The, the Bible, why aren't all the books in the Bible? Why are certain things left? It's all manipulation at the highest levels. And like so many of these, like we had guys on yesterday talking about how Jesus possibly could have been one of the... From one of these elite families. And you're like, it, it, there's always a story now with these people that are culturally. You know, Martin Luther King, right? He like totally pushed forward by the CIA and the FBI. Huh. Right? I mean, just all this. Yeah, and this is all stuff pre-internet. And yeah. it's like, it's hard to know like how much of this was a psyop. And we have just have no idea. Like, if you ever looked into the Challenger explosion? Yeah. <laughs> and wow, that crazy asked ass story? Yes. And but, how all those, how a ton of them are people look just like them dude. if they were age with the exact same name because the internet wasn't what they thought it was going to be. When they were making the internet back then, there's actually videos of the people who created going, maybe it'll be like 10 website pages on the internet <laughs> they didn't realize that there would be guys out there that can't get laid coming up with ways <laughs> to make money well i mean the other day so some old lady was like we we're talking about how covid deaths are fake and then she's like now that i think about it they could have lied about aids people dying from aids and hiv and we didn't know because internet wasn't back then back then because she was like they like hit her head i was like if they lied and they're lying now it makes me think they weren't lying then, but it was so funny to watch an old lady like, holy shit, she's like, wait up, what? Because she's like, this reminded me of the AIDS epidemic when we were all scared. And then I was like, but I thought this is fake. And she's like, how do you not think that was fake? And she was like, oh. Yeah, I mean, like, when you look at Fauci and how he's connected to all this dark stuff, it's all it's all about stealing your louche, man. I 100% yeah. Yeah, I remember that. I, I grew up in the, the 80s and 90s, and I was scared to get AIDS before I even had sex. Like, I was 12 exactly, years old, yeah. worried about AIDS. Like, you remember the there hell? was that story? Guy had AIDS, sex one time, now he's got full-blown AIDS. You're like, <laughs> no! <laughs> one time you use a condom without a condom. You're like, it's over! Yeah. Why? Right? I bet just... people were getting tested while they wore condoms. Yeah. Like, yeah. I need to get tested. Definitely. I wore a condom. Oh, just think about, like, this 2020 will be seen as the golden era of for mass companies. There will, will never be a time <laughs> yeah. where like people will wear masks like this again. And the question is, are they prepping us for something? Come that are they getting us to not believe in anything, and so they could bring something in that will hammer us all because we refuse to take any protocols, or are they constantly just stealing our loosh? And that's what I think is going on. That we are way more powerful than they want to let us believe in that. So much on our, 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 what we see on television is just a blatant lie. Yeah. To just get us to be so afraid of everything. And when we get in the UFO, so much of this is about getting us to be afraid of things that we'll never see in our life. That's what Stephen Greer. Uh, you know, and I don't agree with everything Stephen Greer does. Like he's out there in the desert, meditating and channeling aliens and stuff. But he he talked about this a couple of years ago, talking about how like, oh, you know, the military industrial complex is going to be behind this new disclosure thing, and they're going to do it to sort of, uh, you know, uh, get more 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 funding. They're going to scare the people oh, to get more shit. funding as the ultimate yeah. sort of enemy. And, you know, Ronald Reagan talked about this. He said, like, the only way to unite humanity is, like, with an alien threat. And well, so you brought that up. So do you think uh, Bob Lazar and Mike and Tom DeLon, they're all psyop? They're all put in by the government, telling them they see this. Go go on Rogan and let everybody know that aliens are coming and you saw this. So yeah. you think it's all psyop? You think it's all... Not, not, not that they know. They probably think they really saw this. Yeah. I'm not saying they're liars. Yeah. I'm just saying... That's what Bill Cooper said. Yeah, yeah I, I'm, I'm with the Bill Cooper camp. Of like, because Bill Cooper seemed to know the deal pretty well, and he was like, "Look, I don't know if I was supposed to see that. Like, they made me see it. Uh, like Bob Lazar, like I believe that dude. Like 
he, I've heard enough of his interviews. And I'm like, this guy believes he saw some things, and whether or not it was true, I don't know. Maybe it was a psyop for him to leak that information. Uh, look at the the key players in the disclosure movement, right? Um, of the new one, you've got. Okay, so like the New York Times breaks these stories about the videos, right? And you're watching the videos and you're like, wow, that's, that's crazy. And like they talk about it a little bit. But then like you turn on the TV and uh, Josh Gates is on, I don't know, what Travel Channel, Discovery Channel, whatever it is. And he's breaking down these videos and he's talking about the specifics. And he's like, well, you see how it triangulates over here and here's the radar. And like he's giving you more information than the New York Times. And I'm like, yo, they're giving this guy a script. And then Joe Rogan, he's got all the hot guests. And I mean, it's Joe Rogan, right? Like, it's the biggest show in the world. But like, still, he's, I think they're, they're, they're enabling certain voices to, to hit the, the mainstream because they know the mainstream is like going to hear it on podcasts and they're watching the show. Like, they're not going to watch the news. Yeah. They, they, 100%. So it's like, a, it's almost like it's unfolding on these like untra- non traditional paths. I think they're killing off m- traditional media. Yeah. They're it, like, you know, back to your silo thing. Like, how much better is it if there's no mainstream media and we all just go to the people we want to hear what we want to hear from? Yeah, super divided by then. Yeah, but I think people are waking up to it. I really do, dude. And I think all those guys may have actually seen that because I've heard that story, similar story from a guy that uh, a someone's dad that I know that never came out and said anything told the exact same story. But I think that all leads to like, I don't think these crafts you're seeing are alien. I think they're U S government crafts that they're putting stories behind to make you think they're aliens. And I think in reality, the real stuff is interdimensional. Well, it's kind of interesting that they came out with the SpaceX Right, space, or Space Force. Yeah. Yeah. Right yeah. before that all happened. Yeah, right? they, they, they set up this foundation of like a vehicle for the money. And then and then they you know, Trump creates the Space Force and then a year later he's like, you know what, I want a big report about everything you guys know. And then we wait a, six months or a year, whatever it was, and then they give you it, it was literally I read the report without the title page and the appendix, it's six pages. I'm like, this is not what the this hell is, is everything this? we know, man? And all it says is it says we have all these things. We don't know what they are. Give us some money and we'll tell you. And it's like, <laughs> and how long did that take to come out? Like right. by six, six pages. You're like, months. are you still right. reading? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, dude, what is happening? It, it, I don't know what the answer psy-op is. Psyop on psyop it's, on top of psyop. It's psy-op. Psy-op on psyop. And I just think that like the real stuff is what they're doing with the Fed. And well, I mean, is it the real stuff? I mean, are are is BlackRock buying up all the real estate? Do we know that for sure? My parents sold their house. I'll tell you that much. Well, the uh, I, I, sold I, I don't. House. I don't know if it's BlackRock, but someone bought it, and the guy so, didn't. The guy didn't even. They didn't even look at it. They bought it online. Didn't even look at that's it. That's what they it's say. For rent. Is it's for rent. My, it, this guy yep. bought it to rent it out. I don't know. Obviously not black market, but the guy didn't even bother. BlackRock, yeah. Straight bu- bought it. I mean, this is where we're going, bro. It's just like that to me is the real shit. Yeah, yeah, it's, that's what that's what I I did. Um, I did, man, I did like six shows on the Great Reset because I read through Klaus Schwab's books and kind of did a little book club kind of thing with it. And I just released episode number six talking about the housing market and BlackRock and all these ideas. And uh, yeah, I don't know what the I don't know what the end game is. That extensions of the inter, in, in the uh, international banking cabal and the intelligence community. Yeah, they're buying up all the land, like like Bill Gates. What, why has he got to buy all the farmland? Like, what are they wh- after? After Trump gave him a j- ten billion dollar grant from the government for his one company for research, and then he turns around and buys up all this land, and then they give Amazon. They give Jeff Bezos $10 billion for space stuff, and he goes and buys MGM. This is how the government starts to take slowly over. Now, I think that's fascism, but everyone's like, that's not fascism. That's uh, corporatocracy. It's all fascism. Mm. It's all fascism. They can't just come out and do it. They have to do it. But it's all bought with funny money. It's fake money. Mm. That gets you right into the crypto stuff, right? I mean, and maybe crypto, but crypto's as real as fiat money. So it's yeah. like, buy guns, buy gold. You think the economy? So 
you know uh, the, who the dollar vigilante is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, I heard of him through, uh, I interviewed Charlie Robinson. Uh, shout out Charlie Robinson. Yeah. Um, but he told me about him, and I kind of followed him casually. And he was saying months ago, like, by the end of 2021, full full crash, full economy crash in America, you know. Like, I, I think it's coming. Scary. I think it's coming. And I do think, uh, I think crypto is going to, like he was saying this before, I think crypto is going to be a big part of surviving through that. Mm. You know, I just bought this. Um, the only I, thing that scares I, me about crypto is if they're trying to come at us, you just close the internet off and how do I well, prove to you I that I have crypto? That's why I just bought this ledger, right? It's this storage. It's a hard, it's a hard, it's a hard wallet, right? hard wallet that you store your crypto yeah. on so they can't just shut it down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, like a thumb drive kind of thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah, but yeah, it's 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 set the uh, store your crypto. The crypt the cryptos are so damn co complicated. I mean, there's no way this is scaling out to everybody, right? Well, my it's own, hard to buy. Yeah, but it'll it's eventually so be a thing much. like on your phone, you know, and you just scan your phone, and that it, that's gonna. I mean, if you see it now, the the countries, the like. What is it? Is it Ecuador now? Or El there? Salvador. El Salvador. El Salvador. Yeah. The only problem scary well, I, about that is you got to use a government no, app there's, to there's do it. There's one other country that is they're and in crisis and, that's and they turn been... to it. And it's, and it's people, you can see though, it's people like on their phones scanning these. And, and they're, I mean, we're talking like farmers and, and really people who aren't, techni technological, mm. uh, aren't technologically inclined are using it. So I, I don't know. I, that, I think that's always been my my. Like, I, I think cryptos are, like, too confusing to scale to America. But, like, you look at countries that have, like, very unstable currencies. And I've always been like, sure, like, invest in some Bitcoin because, like, like El Salvador took it on. Because they were like, well, this is more stable than our crazy currency. You know? Yeah, I also think what everybody else is doing should never be a worry. Like, you know, when I told everybody, like, you know, that everybody wants a $15 an hour job. I'm like, how about not having a minimum wage job how about that try to get out of doing that <laughs> and people lost their skull not everybody can have a podcast bro i'm like i'm not i'm not Te talking about everybody they could. technically they could technically yeah <laughs> but i'm like i'm just talking about you and finding a way to make money as an independent contractor and you could do it you just gotta i dude i just paid a dude a hundred bucks to properly install my baby seats in my car because i just couldn't get that i and because every video I watch didn't tell me about this one strap that I needed to use. Hey, I'm by like, the way, that strap from? by the way, I got beef with you. I got truth or drama for you, Sam Tripoli. Oh shit! Oh, no. Where did, I love, how did a baby oh. seat invoke this? Right, I know. <laughs> I'm, I'm bringing Josie Wise up in for backup on this. I listened to the show with Gordo. Shout out Gordo. Those conspiracy guys. And you guys said that. Um, what was the side? You said there was a psyop to tell people not to have kids because uh, something like, you know, oh, the world's so bad, don't ever have kids. But like me and Josie, we don't have kids. And I'm like, and I feel like on our side of the house, I'm like, there's a psyop telling me like, oh, kids are so great. It's this magical thing. And, okay. You know, so I just, just for the voice of the, on the other side of the argument, I'm like, mm. not for having most kids. Most of my life, I, I didn't have kids. Yeah. And I totally understand oh, right, where you're right, coming yeah. from. I do. Because I see what you watch Hallmark Channel. It's like, oh, my God, I'm going to have kids, and we're going to fill the house for Thanksgiving, and everyone's going to get along. And it's like, eh. Well, and then you hang well, out with your family, and you're like. <laughs> well, what I was talking about is how I see so many of my friends in Hollywood, these women, are like, I'm not having kids. I don't want to have kids. And I'm totally fine with that because I think having to have kids is what women are, are pushed on women are pushed on women and guys who live with their mother are seen as like, Oh, you're a failure in life. Like my brother complains about that because he's working forever. And now cause the, cause of the, um, the fire, the pandemic, he had to move in with my mom and he's super happy living with her and she's happy. He's living there, yeah, but apparently nice. he's getting a lot of shit from people because yeah. he's in his mid forties and he's living with his mother. And I go, well, you know, that's probably a lot of what, um, women go through with not having children. You're like, they're this constant push to have kids. And I see people, my friends who have blue check marks, you know, like acting like, I'm so excited I don't have children. But you see that that's not really what's going on. And it just seems that it, I'm just talking with feminism. There seems to be this like towing the company line. And in reality, they're pretty miserable people. Oh. That's what I'm trying to oh, say. Oh, okay, I got you. I got you. Right? You know, it's like, dude, 
I didn't have kids for a long time, and I was totally going to be like, oh, I'm not going to have kids, that's life. Now I have kids, and I, I'm very thankful. It's a lot of work. Yeah. It's a lot of work. I'm, I'm not making any illusions of it. It is, I'm decaying at a rapid rate. Uh-huh. <laughs> I looked at myself in the mirror, I'm like, oh, I'm aging so quickly. And it's just a lot of work. But I'm, I'm fine with people doing whatever they want. I just feel like there's this narrative that you see it happen all the time with like, oh, COVID's made women go back into the household that makes like being a mom like like settling for less. And yeah. like I actually know what you're talking about. I'll everybody just you shit. loves their mother so much. Yeah. And I'm like this notion that it's like the worst thing in the world is like I think a giant thing to get women not to want to have children. That's yeah. all. If you don't have kids, I totally I, I actually get what you're saying. We're watching a show on Netflix. What's that show called? Sex Life. Mm. And like that's the storyline is like you know it, it almost makes it look like this this poor lady she's a, she's a like a stay at home mother right and yeah. it's almost it almost sells it like she she's lose. given up her whole yeah. fun side of her life and like she, and the whole the whole plot is like she's questioning it like God was this worth it Yeah but I think that that's the hard part about being a woman being the only one sitting at this table <laughs> is that that you lose your identity when you become a mother motherhood is that so many people have to grapple with like having both of it or how do you navigate having the motherhood thing but then also having your own wants because you have to give so much up for your children yeah and it's hard there's a a little bit of that like madonna whore complex thing going you think that's like tied into that a little bit where it's like for men for sure yeah it's like well you can't be the mother of my child and be freaking the sheets a dirty whore (laughs) (laughs) we all love dirty whores though right or pro dirty whore on the show (laughs) um you know I, i i totally get that I totally get that. Here's my whole thing is this. And, you know, I think people should do what they're happy with. And just it's a long journey, you know. I mean, so here I am as a stand up comic. I've been banging stand up comedy for 26 years, like grinding really hard. And I kind of go, I don't want to do it like I used to. And like there's a part of me that is really like. Man, you're like, you've worked so hard for this. You finally hit this thing that you love so much. And now you're like, you don't want to do it anymore. And I'm like, well, I, my my needs have changed. So my whole thing is like, the journey is so long. And whatever you want, think you want today, you may not want tomorrow. And I just feel like, I mean, I can only speak from, I, I, I am not here to tell people that they have to have kids. That's the <laughs> biggest thing. It sounds like it. But I'm also going to be 100% honest that I'm, I, I love them and I, I don't know where my life would be without them. That's like, good. And that's he's really the, all. one of the only people that I, I've seen change. Like he wasn't a kid person, but like when he had his kids, there's you guys can't see him, but there's pictures of the kids in the studio, like that he sees all the time that I never thought would happen. I never thought Sam would be like that's that needs all. to go up there. And me and yeah. Johnny looked at each other, be like, "What up, Sam? Real?" <laughs> and we don't mind them. The babies are cute, but we never expected a Sam to put them in the studio. Yeah, you know, yeah. and his life has changed. He sometimes like I just can't wait That'd to go home. That'd be so home funny if you're like the, the babies aren't even that good looking. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I gotta say. Every thing is it's such a long journey i actually think i'm actually like i i think on some levels as human beings when you look at this from like a spiritual idea you zoom out of all this crazy shit we do i actually think like having kids is kind of like the reason we're here like there's a magic behind it you're you're going back to the occult magic like you're creating something here like like that's got to be the most magical, insane feeling. As and a like, girl, yeah, I don't know how you just something came out of here. Like that must just be like well, so person, cool, like a realm. Right? That's like a realm. Some yeah. person came yeah. out of here. Yeah, wild, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. like on some levels, like that's it the purpose magical. we're here. That's why we're here. Yeah, it's magic. Like that's the reason we're here. But like you know, like and you like, you just can't remember a time they weren't there. Yeah. It's the craziest thing ever. Yeah. But it's just to each their own. But I always say, you know, the biggest thing I would just want to teach everybody is like how long the journey is and it's just like if things aren't working out for you right now in this time in your life it's okay because you don't know where you're going to be in 10 years and you know in in recovery i learned like don't judge my insides by somebody else's outsides because i used to do that all the time and like in this town of just chaos that is the entertainment system uh industry i've seen so many people just fly past me and just get all the bells and whistles. And now, late 30s, 40s, they're lost. And I don't wish any any bad things on anybody. I want everybody to be happy. 
and find happiness. But it like the journey is long, man. Yeah. The journey is uh, you can't like it flies like this, but it's forever. And it's like you could be bottoming out in your twenties, bombing out in your thirties, and just hit magic in your forties. Even your fifty. I mean, Joey Diaz didn't hit till he was almost fifty years old, yeah. and that's the funniest dude on the planet. So it's, it's just like all I ever say is it's it's a wonderful journey, and wherever you're gonna be, you know, you just you know you're gonna be where you're gonna be, and it's just, it will all work out. Yeah, you got to keep grinding. I I because I've been. I've been doing this conspiracy thing for like 10, 11 years, and it started as just fun. Like, I had no intentions of it being the third greatest conspiracy podcast of all time. <laughs> I mean, uh, unbelievable. Unreal. <laughs> we have royalty in the studio. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, no, but you, you know, you keep plugging away, and like, you know, things happen eventually. It's kind of weird. Kind of weird how it works, you know? Well, I find, you know, and it could be back to woo woo, but like, when you just put out positive energy, positive energy comes back, and, yeah. you know, it's like, from this show, it's always been just like, be the most authentic you can be. Show people love who come on the show. Don't like kneecap them or be a contrarian just for the sake. And that, I've gotten in arguments with people. People I love, I've gotten in arguments with. And, um, you know, the, it all comes back. And I do believe in the, you know, law, uh, the model of abundance stuff as much Woo woo as that is, it's just when I apply it to my life, things start to work out, you know, and yeah. that's kind of where it's at. And it's just, I would rather believe that there's hope in the world than believe it's all just, we're just, as Bill Hicks would say, we're viruses with shoes on, you know, <laughs> and uh, that's kind of where I am. So it, it kind of yeah, all I'm works out. Because sometimes if we look too much into the darkness, right? If you look, if you just know when you're looking into the abyss, the abyss is looking back to you, like, the, the light gets snuffed out. And I just like, I what is the even point? If, if it was doom and gloom and there was no hope, this show would end. I wouldn't do the show anymore. It's like, what's the point of doing the show if at the end everything just crashes and burns and it's all shit? And I do believe they would have done it already. And so much of what they're doing right now is all on our screens. And if you get off that shit, and that includes the show. <laughs> I mean, we're number eight in the world. <laughs> but you know I mean if it's giving you not what you need then you gotta go find it somewhere else man and it's, that's it and if it's like if we're stealing your loosh which I don't want any of it I want to keep my own you keep your own and this helps you understand who's trying to steal it if uh, you know if this show's t stealing your loose, then stop listening to it. Yeah, you guys, you guys evolved um, the conspiracy because I've been listening to conspiracy podcasts since man. I think my first, my first interview was like 2012, and like you know, like, like your Freeman flies, your Greg Carlwoods, like like those shows have been knocking it out for a long time. But like your guys' show, it it added this element of fun to it that that I personally am drawn to because like. You, you listen to too much of the information and, and it puts you in a negative headspace. Yes. And and I agree. I, I actually believe in a lot of that law of attraction stuff. And like, you can't walk around in this negative headspace and thinking everyone's a shape shifting lizard is going to get you. <laughs> and like, that's going to draw like negativity towards you. So like, I'm cool with learning about it. I'm cool with being like, dude, I think that could be real. But like, I draw the line in my personal life and say, cool that might be real but like i'm gonna i'm gonna stay in this uh like like uh what, what homeboy from the matrix that eats the steak you know well, eddie bravo says it the best way he's like during the weekends when i'm up with i'm when i'm with my kids i'm blue pilled i'll go watch any movie he wants to watch yes. and i don't tell him nothing i'm blue pilled he thinks nas is real i think nas is real and on the weekends when i'm on youtube i'm red pilled the fuck out but with my kid i don't try to push nothing on him i don't when he's older, he always talks about when he's older, though. <laughs> but yeah, like when, like you said, with family, just during the week. Well, that goes back yeah. to our episode on how to talk to sheeple. It's just like you can't force them to learn anything they don't want to learn. So why do that? You know, for me, man, it's just like I'm really in this kind of place, like spiritually, when it comes to like stand up in the industry, dude. It's like I'm really in a place to disconnect and go full underground where I'm just doing my own shows and my own venues and just not allowing anybody to put any kind of like value on me where they see what my value is. 
because they don't do it and they're and everybody's just passing through right it's like you are you are the sky the rest is weather right it's just passing through okay and it's just i i, I want nobody to tell me what my value is ever and it's just stealing yeah. my loose and that's the beauty that's that's the, the you know we talk about this great reset new normal and all the bad things well there's a lot of good things that come out of this is like you know guys like like you and and, and me this couldn't have happened 20 years ago we're blessed that, you know i'm Absolutely. older than you bro yeah. but i held on long enough to be able to step into this window that is open for me and it all worked out like it it all worked out man yeah. it, you know and not that it's over because it could all crash and burn could, tomorrow man. right it could but like you know that 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 video I played at the end of the uh, last episode, which was uh, Terrence McKenna about pulling out of this system that's stealing your fucking energy and creating your own little system. Like I that that video plus this thing I saw Dave Chappelle doing, and you know I think Dave Chappelle's the greatest comedian to ever walk the planet Earth, yeah. and my ego hates hearing that, but it's <laughs> the truth. Without a doubt, he's the greatest to ever. Do it. I'm suspect on a lot of stuff he's doing now and some of the people he's hanging out with. I don't think they're good people. But, you know, he talks about Hollywood and the soul sucking yeah. that it does. And, like, like, by me calling into these comedy clubs and wanting to play there and begging them for spots, I'm fueling this system that I have a major fucking problem with their acceptance of pedophiles and their, their acceptance of horrible people and the phoniness and all that. And the only way for me to, to survive it is to completely pull my energy out. And maybe down the line when my, my, my chi is super powerful and I don't have to deal with all of their bullshit, I'll come back. But at this moment, it's like, I don't like what's going on. And I, by, Asking to perform their clubs, I am green lighting what they're doing. I'm co signing what they're doing, and I'm done, and I'm over it, and I, I'm gonna do my own things, and maybe I just fade to oblivion. That's on. That's definitely a possibility as well. But right now, it's like I want to walk the walk, and by by going, I don't want to. I don't want to be a part of your system anymore because you you're feel making like that's all. kind of part of the reason you don't want to is that the more you've learned about it, the more you're kind of disgusted and yeah. pulling away from it 100 percent 100 percent but you're still doing comedy clubs right now right i mean yeah yeah but i mean la comedy is at oh, rock comedy. bottom right oh, now okay. and there's no i it's just like i can't save it and if he does it's more like a hole in the walls like we're not doing the improv at Texas, or oh, it's more I, like I didn't a know little, there was like a hierarchy of sort of like. Well, there's A clubs, clubs B clubs, yeah. C clubs. Oh, okay. I want to not even be yeah. on any alphabet. I want to do my own club. Could you just, could you just rent a conference room out at the Hilton, you dude? Do? If as long as it's acoustically okay and they can see me, I'll play anywhere. We I had just, a movie theater this one. Time. I'd rather do yeah. that than play into the system that allows fucking scumbags to play their clubs. People who steal from other people, people who hurt children, and all that stuff. And then uh, this vaccine card bullshit. It's like, what happened? To, why are all the fucking artists conformists now? I'm out. And like these videos have just let me know to pull out, and maybe it all crashes and burns on me. I don't know, but I'm all about that action. So I'm all, I, I'm going to pull out, and you know? And I know you were talking about you got a big event coming up at comic-con in salt lake and hopefully that'll be the beginning of you getting out there on the road meeting your fans i mean the third podcast conspiracy podcast <laughs> of the world's gotta go i gotta put that on to the, the marquee people. of course it's gonna go to comic-con first show that's a great yeah, show to dude, start I mean, you're Let's going go. to yeah. on the first one you Let's should go maybe do a small one just to see how you want to do it then <laughs> hit the ground running but either way it's gonna be great and you should do it yeah, yeah, that's uh, I plan on making fun of all the nerds. They really like it when you poke fun at superheroes and stuff at Comic Con. So we'll see how that goes over. Is, is ancient aliens in Comic Con? Because they used to be, right? Oh, did they? I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't really mess if with Comic Con. If it adds to the story of space, you're invited. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I know. I submitted my like syllabus of what I wanted to do, and they accepted it. And I thought, oh man, I hope they like. I don't know if they know to the level of what I talk about. So I'm gonna. I'm gonna really zoom it out and make the it like. The greatest sort of thing PG. that could ever happen to you is you get kicked out of Comic Con. Oh, that would be, huh? <laughs> well, you know what's funny. You know what's funny is um, I talk about. Um, uh, what's his name? Is it Henry Thomas, the the kid who played E.T. Right? I talk about I talk about it in my uh, Use Your Illusion Two book. Right? I talk about him and I talk about Joey Kramer, the guy from Flight of the Navigator. They'll like, be there. 
And uh, yeah, the one dude's gonna be there. I'm like, dude, what if I get punched in the face by the dude from ET? How Just awesome would that be? Just make sure she's recorded. Yeah, oh my god, time. needs to be recorded. If not, it's not worth it, dude. Yeah. I think it might be worth it. Yeah, hey, I'm gonna go try to poke this bear. Record, babe. <laughs> oh shoot. Yeah, speaking of which, I thought Eddie Bravo was gonna be here. I wanted Eddie Bravo to choke me out. What yeah, happened? I mean, like he uh, he charges for that. He's uh, been uh, showing up lately, which is great. He took a big break. Break, man, he that guy's always in the head of the curve, and he was like, "If I, I if you can't see it, I can't help you." <laughs> so now we go on the road, and it's fun. And if the guy really wanted to, he could be one of the best comedians working today. I mean, he's so fun. every time we hang out, it's a story you've never heard of. Oh. Super polished oh. crush. Yeah, that was oh. a good episode. I listened to the Flat Earth one. I, I made it halfway, and I thought I gotta watch the damn video because you guys were talking about a lot of stuff I couldn't see. Yeah, I mean, it was great. Uh, it's been interesting the reaction. He blew my cover. Yeah. What's that? He blew my cover. What do you mean? That I don't claim Flat Earth because I'm still trying to get pussy. <laughs> Straight blew my cover, dude. Everybody, all the girls were like, "Oh, really? That's so You're funny." A flat Earther. <laughs> he started a dating website for Flat Earthers. <laughs> It's like three chicks. <laughs> hey, there was some chicks out there asking for it. Like, I'm a flat earther on in the, in the comments. I was like, well, you're I getting, do, you're gonna get it. I do these, <laughs> get that flat Earth dick. I, I do these crypto events, and it's like they're all like off the grid shit. It's like a, a hundred guys and three chicks. <laughs> Women love the grid. They fucking love it. It's set up for them, and it's. <laughs> Right. Well, I mean, I watched the Flat Earth documentary. Those guys are pretty dorky. Like they're, they they salute each other like this, right? They do this thing like to show oh, the Earth is flat. Man. I'm like, oh. bro, it's too much. I didn't know they had a salute. Yeah, but, but also that could be done to make people look stupid too. Like it they could be. they did that on Jim Jeffrey's show, right? They had all those yeah. those uh, oh, conspiracy man. people on. Yeah. And they were just there to make him look dumb. That guy I, sucks. I was on a... Ooh, Jim Jeffries? Yes. yes. I can't fucking oh. stand him, dude. He big leaked me at the store. I'll smack the fuck out of oh, him. Oh, what dog. happened? Truth or... It's comedian drama, stand-up mm -hmm. comic no, drama. It's just like he's just like he sold his soul. Oh, yeah. He was this guy who's kind of like this dark comic, and then all of a sudden yeah. now he's a social justice warrior. Yeah, he, he was pretty funny on his stand-up, and then he had that show, and it, and it kind of like... like was yeah. it didn't seem to fit his sort of stand up, no, I didn't think. It, it's just all about money and power. At the end of the day, mm -hmm. you're like, it's it's just all gross. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, hey dude, I guess you made the money. I guess you're happy. You seem like a fucking train wreck in life. Oh, <laughs> uh, he's Isaac Weisip. Uh his book, Aliens, UFOs, the Occult, Use Your Illusion to available now. Check it out. Isaac. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thanks for having me out. Appreciate Josie, it. Josie, thank you. Pleasure thank to meet you. you. Yes. Glad you could show up uh, and hope you had a great time. Uh, dude, anytime you want to come on, come right. on in. Let's I go. think I'm going to be in Salt Lake soon. Get uh, out, I really? think I'm going to do a show um, out there, some indie stuff. But, you know, if we do do a Tim Fall Hat comedy, you should come maybe join us on the. Um, uh, the skank, oh. uh, the uh, the uh, form, form tank. tank. Oh, that'd be so sick! Yeah, most definitely. Just All come right. up and answer questions and stuff like that. Uh, for those who might not know you, I mean, you're number three, so they all know who you are. <laughs> but tell them uh, where they can find all your stuff. <laughs> Just those couple of people. Oh. Uh, IlluminatiWatcher.com is the jump off point, but my books are all on Amazon, Audible, self narrated, almost all of them on Audible. Uh, so there's if, if you're a book person, that's that option. If you like podcasts, I have the third best conspiracy podcast, uh, Conspiracy Theories and Unpopular Culture. Uh, and I've got like, you know, I do the Rockfin thing, you know, shout out Sam Tripoli. Uh, we're on the Rockfin. Uh, so if you listen to Sam on Rockfin or, or uh, you know, all these other shows, you can check me out on there. Uh, and then uh, me and Josie started a, a fun podcast I alluded to earlier uh, called Breaking Social Norms. We've got a free feed. That's got like the censored, you know, I bleep out all the F bombs that Bet. we drop. Or <laughs> we. Um, uh, but you can go you can go uncensored on Rockfin too. So like you get you get access to to that show as well. And and basically it's like it, it's more of like a lot of people get upset about it because they're used to my show, Conspiracy Theories, which is like I I sort of analyze things and talk about the symbolism in them. But this is more of like a chill out show where it's just us talking about stuff. And she's kind of like the non truther perspective. And I'm sort I'm of red sheeple. pilling her. She's the sheeple. <laughs> she's, she's the, the sheeple. brain wall. She sheeple. threw herself in there. She's like, all right. I, I'm the sheeple. Sorry. <laughs> so, so, yeah, that's it's just a fun conversation. A lot of people identify with it because they, I, I, I read so many messages. People say, 
oh, you know, Isaac, I love this show because this is what it's like when I talk to my wife. And like, <laughs> and, and some levels, I feel like this is good because, uh, you know, and you did Conspiracy Social Club. It's, it's in that same vein yeah. where uh, it's a little less combative. Have you ever heard Deborah gets red pilled? No, uh, but I've heard of it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He red pills his his wife. Oh, someone already's doing mom. it. Okay. No, dude. Everything's. <laughs> I, I think you, I think these are the fun shows. And the reason I think this show resonates because people like to be able to listen to stuff with their wives and their girlfriends. Yeah. And that's a big reason why I think like your mom's house is so big is because they have that dynamic. That's really fun and. Like she's lethal fast, and you uh, go Christina into the Pajinsky. and you go into the fun stuff too. Like yeah. you go into Hollywood. Females love Hollywood. Da, da, da. You're yeah. you're like, oh, I knew. Like other girls I've talked to, like I listen to him because he talks about Rihanna, and they love that oh, yeah. shit. I'm, so I'm pretty so, basic. Yeah. And so, Starbucks. Yeah. I'm a pretty basic bitch. <laughs> listen, maybe this show needs a whole different crowd. Yeah. You know, it's like yeah. maybe we all bring a different Illuminati flavor to the table. Yeah, watchers aren't the same people. I know that. Like with Zero, Zero. The crowd, yeah, there's some overlap, but not everybody in, in Tim Fall Hat is into Zero, and not everybody in Zero is in the Tim Fall Hat. It's just the way it is. So you can't worry about, you know, maybe the show needs to find its own crowd. Yeah, definitely. But I, I think it's just like you got to, you know, you just got to keep plugging away and have fun with it, and I think it will pay off. Yeah, yeah, it's a pretty good time. We we don't fight about it too much. We have a good time on the show. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but yeah, I'm all over the place. You guys have great hair together. Well, she's a hairstylist. <laughs> you, know? you guys have phenomenal <laughs> hair, both of you. I'm very impressed. It's like they really wonderful, do. like Vegas, like entertainer hair. That's like top shelf shit. Well, I think they didn't even want to put on his headphones. You saw him. Do I have to? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I do Instagram lives sometimes, and like my hair looks crazy. And like, and uh, Josie will come home and she'll be like, "You didn't do live like that, did you?" I'm like, "Yeah, you know, like a homeless dude <laughs> taking my shirt off with well, my hair all crazy." Great, dude! Yeah. I love getting my hair done. It's like the one thing I like. I just sit back and just get let your cares get zipped yeah. away. Yeah. All right, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I am in Alaska this weekend. I hope to see you there. San Diego is almost sold out. So grab your tickets. And then Texas and OKC, all tickets again at samtriply.com. Thank you guys, uh, both of you guys, Johnny, Xavier, and we will see you guys soon. Take care. We go deep, homeboy. Eric, open your mind. Drink from the fountain of knowledge. There's lizard people everywhere. That's some interdimensional shit. Wake up, Aaron. This is only the beginning. Dude, you just blew my mind. Tim foil hack, tin foil hack, tin foil hack.